Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, I'm going to take you on a tour of the Pentec Spotmatic and show you how everything works. The Spotmatic was the second 35mm single lens reflex with built-in through the lens metering. It was one of the most popular 35mm SLRs in the 1960s into the 1970s. The Pentec Spotmatic uses two CDS cells on either side of the penaprism to measure the entire focusing screen and it gives you an averaging reading. Okay, so let's go over the camera settings starting with the top right side. Okay, we have the shutter speed dial with speeds from bulb up to one one thousandth of a second. You will notice the 60th of a second speed is marked with an X. Uh, that indicates that it is the top speed to sync with electronic flash. You will notice a small window to the left of the shutter speed dial. This window will turn red as a warning signal when the shutter speed and film speed settings are out of the meter's range. Okay, so the ISO right now is set for 400. The shutter speed is at a fifteenth. I'm going to turn it to an eighth, a quarter, and when I get to a half a second exposure, that indicates that with a 400 speed film, a half second is out of the meter's range. It won't meter down that low. Okay, another um, thing with the shutter speed dial on the Spotmatic is it will turn around 360 degrees. On a lot of cameras, you get to a thousandth of a second, and um, if you want to go to a, a, a slow speed, a real slow speed, uh, you know, you got to keep turning it. With this Spotmatic, you can just go the opposite direction and you go quickly from a thousand to one second. All right. Okay. You will also notice around the um, shutter speed dial is a ring and you lift up that ring and you could set your film speed in the little window right above the B setting. So to the right of the shutter speed dial, you have the shutter release. Spotmatic shutter release is very smooth. Um, it is threaded for a standard cable release. To the right of that, you will see the film advance lever. Okay, it's about 160 degree throw. And you could advance the film in that 160 degree stroke or several smaller strokes and that of course advances the film, advances the frame counter and cocks the shutter. Okay, you will also notice when the shutter is cocked, there's a little window between the advance lever and then the uh, release, the shutter release, and it will turn red when the shutter is cocked. Once you release the shutter, the red disappears. Uh, it's always a good idea with a focal plane shutter not to leave it wound if you're going to store the camera for any length of time. Uh, so, um, you know, you don't want to keep that shutter cocked. On the left side of the camera, we have the film rewind knob and crank. Okay, and around that is a, a film type reminder dial. Um, you could set it here for empty, for pancro, which is for black and white and then for color, either um, transparency or color negative film. Now we're coming to the front of the camera. Okay, and uh, we have our self timer. And the way the self timer works, let me make sure the shutter is cocked. The way the self timer works on the Spotmatic, uh, if you put it at about 90 degrees, it's gonna give you about a five second delay. If you go all the way, uh, it'll give you about a 13 second delay. Once the shutter is cocked, you just press the button on the front and in a, at the way it was set in approximately five seconds, the shutter will fire. Now, let's suppose you set the self timer and then you decide, you know what, I don't want to use the self timer. Are you stuck with it? No. What you can do is just press your shutter release, take the picture, and before you advance the film and cock the shutter again, just press that button 
and the self timer will wind down and since the shutter is not cocked it's not going to fire the shutter okay on the other side of the camera we have two PC outlets okay the bottom one is marked X and that is for electronic flash so you plug your flash into the bottom one the upper one marked FP is for bulbs uh, no one uses bulbs anymore I don't even think they're manufactured just make sure when you're using your electronic flash with this camera that you plug it into the bottom one if you plug it into the top it's not going to sync properly with your uh, with your flash okay there's one more control on that side of the camera it's a switch marked SW this is the meter switch you press it up and you'll notice there's a little window turns red okay now your meter is on but also your lens is stopped down to the aperture at which you have it set so the, the this camera uses what's called stop down metering so it meters the light at the working aperture okay which means when you do that the uh, view through the viewfinder is going to get a little dark depending on the aperture obviously if you have it set to f16 it's going to be very dark so once you center the needle in the viewfinder and you can do that either by turning the shutter speed dial or the aperture ring once that is centered then you just press that meter switch down so that the lens will open up to maximum aperture to make it easier to see okay uh, and again the meter uses two cdsls to measure the entire screen one more thing while we're on the front of the camera and we're going to talk about the lens mount this is an M42 screw thread lens mount. Very, very popular in the 50s, into the 60s and early 70s. There are literally thousands and thousands of lenses in this mount. Not only from Pentax, from many other companies. Okay, very simple design. There's only one control on the back and that is that stops the lens down at the moment of exposure. Oh, and one other thing on the lens, you will notice uh, we have here an auto manual switch. Normally, you're going to leave it set to auto. What that means is you will be at full aperture until the moment expo of exposure. Actually, what happens uh, when you take a picture, there's a um, device in the camera that pushes on this pin. I don't know if you can see that, and it stops the lens down at the moment of exposure as soon as the uh, exposure is over the lens back, opens back up to full aperture. The screw thread mount is a little, of course it's slower than a bayonet mount. And that's why eventually Pentax went to a bayonet mount in the mid 70s. All right, so continuing uh, to load the camera, to open the back. Uh, and one thing, before you open the back of the camera, always make sure there's no film inside. You know, maybe you didn't set this film reminder, maybe, and maybe you have it set to empty, but there may be film in the camera. So how do you tell, right? Just fold out the rewind crank and just give it a little turn. If it turns freely, that means there's no film in the camera. If there's some resistance, that means you got a roll of film in the camera and either finish the roll or rewind it before you take it out. So to open the back, very simple on the Spotmatic, you just pull up on the rewind knob and the back springs open. Film cassette goes in there. You have a multi-slotted take-up spool. Um, and the shutter curtains are rubberized cloth. And it is a horizontally traveling shutter. Okay, so now we're going to close the back and just take a quick look at the bottom. This body is a little, little beat up. Uh, looks like it spent a lot of time on a tripod. But we have the rewind button here. You just press that in okay, at the end of the roll, and that disengages the internal sprocket so you can rewind the film. You have a tripod socket, and you have the battery compartment. Uh, the battery for this camera, it, it was originally a 1.35 volt mercury battery. Those batteries are no longer made. Wine makes uh, something called the zinc air cell that will work with this camera. It's the proper voltage. However, those batteries don't last very long. Now you can have the camera modified 
to accept a 1.55 volt silver battery, which will work fine. It's just you need to find someone to modify the camera uh, for that battery. This particular model that I have, uh, I bought it very inexpensively, the body only for $25. Everything works fine except the meter, but I don't really care because I like to use a handheld meter um, to uh, meter my exposures. One other thing you will notice this camera does not have a uh, accessory shoe. Okay, later models did. Actually, later models had a um, hot shoe. Pentax does make an accessory, did make an accessory for this, an accessory shoe. And in order to uh, place that onto the camera, you have these two buttons here. You just press them in, and then this slides right over the eyepiece. Okay, and it's pretty secure. Okay, but again, using electronic flash, you're going to need to plug it in. There is no hot shoe. Okay, so why don't I show you how to load the camera? All right, so again, to open the back, you just pull up on the rewind knob, and the back springs open. Your film cassette will go here on the left side. Just be careful not to touch the shutter curtain when you're loading film. This is just a bulk uh, roll. I, I load my own black and white, buy it in 100-foot lengths and loaded into reusable cartridges. All right, so you just make sure that film gets into that take-up spool, and then you advance the film, okay? And you wanna make sure that it engages the sprocket on both sides. Okay, close the back. Turn the camera over and you're going to make a few blanks. Now, what I like to do is leave the rewind crank open. And I'll show you why in a minute. So now we're just going to make our blanks. Okay, now I'm going to make two blanks. Now look at that rewind knob. See how it's turning? If it wasn't turning, that would mean that the film wasn't loaded properly, that it did not catch on the take-up spool. So you're going to make your blanks. All right, and now we're ready to start taking pictures and you just close it back up. All right, so now you've finished your roll. All right, and you're gonna rewind film. We just press in the button on the bottom. Okay, make sure it stays down. Again, unfold the rewind crank and you're gonna rewind the film. Now, if you face resistance here, like a really a lot of resistance, that means that button possibly popped out. Make sure that button stays depressed. Okay, now I'm not going to rewind this leader all the way in. All right, I felt it come off the take-up spool. And I'll open the back. And remove the film. Simple enough. Okay, one other thing, you will see these cameras. This one is marked Honeywell. Pentax. You will also see some uh, above the word Pentax. You will see it say Asahi. Okay? And here's an Asahi Pentax lens cap. All right? Honeywell was the importer of this camera and all the Pentax cameras in the United States. The Asahi Pentax were for sale throughout the rest of the world. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions on the Spotmatic, either leave a comment below or send me an email, and I will be happy to answer your questions. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m., so I will talk to you then.